Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode in the Road to Glory series. Now this one, we have 10 hours left in the window. I decided I was only going to make one more signing and all will become apparent very soon. I took a look through the comments. Um, I did take a look and see what you guys were saying. Um, and then I also looked at the team that we currently had and I thought to myself, where do we really need to strengthen? Now, midfielders, there was a fair few suggestions for centre midfielders. I don't want to sign a new midfielder in centre mid because I don't want to, you know, keep out Ethan Cox or Ethan Shaw. These two guys are playing unbelievable football. They were largely the reason we got to League One and I don't feel that, you know, kicking them out of the team for a new signing in that position would be the right thing to do. And on the bench, currently we've got Hessen Thaler, we've got um, Peterson as well. So centre midfield just didn't feel like I wanted to bring in a new signing there. Wings, exactly the same scenario. We've now got Van Bergen, we've now got... Um, you know, McNeil, we've got McGuinness can't even get back in the side. We've got Hughes trying to come through. So again, exactly the same for wingers. So my two that I was looking at was potentially a new striker and then maybe a defender. Goalkeepers, currently, we're looking good. We've got McNamee and we've got the other guy on the bench, the Scotsman. So goalkeepers are fine. It's either defender or striker. Now, there was one comment that was the most liked comment on the last episode at the time I began to record this. And that player was none other than Timothy Weyer from PSG. Very surprising, this signing, because a lot of you are going to sit there and you're going to go, he just wouldn't be coming to League One. I agree. I 100% agree. It was the most liked comment, though, to sign him. So I went ahead and tried to get a deal in place. Little did I realize that they would actually accept a £2.5 million deal. My only problem, you can see I, ve I deliberated it for a very long time, is the contract. He's on £13,000 a week here at Grimsby Town now. And he becomes our new record signing. So last episode, we broke it, bringing in Van Bergen. We've then gone on to break it again here in this episode with the signing of Timothy Weyer. Now, the reason I did this is because right now we've got Rodney Jansen, obviously through the Youth Academy, has come in. We've got Takefusa Kubo. Kubo, I don't think when we get to the Championship and the Premier League and that sort of level, is going to be able to cut it as a striker. He's just too small. He doesn't have the physicality that you need. And I just don't think he'll cut it in that position. Out on the wing, he should be great. Maybe as a cam, yes. So I was looking and I was thinking to myself, do we need a new striker? And that's where Timothy Weyer fit the bill. And I was so glad that in his first game at the club, pretty much, that we played. He, he was named in the sim game that we played there. But then in his second game that we actually saw him play in, nine minutes into it, he got himself a goal. It's his first goal for Grimsby. I'm sure it will not be his last. But it was just kind of one of those things where I wanted to kind of... I guess, justify the £2 million price tag, £2.5 million price tag that we paid for Timothy Weyer. Now, I know, like I said, a lot of you guys are going to say, realistically, would he be here? No, he would not, as Ethan Shaw doubles our advantage. But I will show you later on in the episode that there is an even better striker currently playing League One football. And to be honest, I genuinely didn't even see him until I made the signing of Timothy Weyer. So I understand that there's going to be people out there who will be disappointed, frustrated maybe that Timothy Weyer has joined us here at Grimsby. But all I can say is trust me. Just trust me and he will come and pay dividends for us later on. And that player as well, by the way, that's currently playing League One football is Artem Juva. And he, he right now is in the My Player series playing currently for Celtic in that one. So I don't know. He's actually 78 rated when the game starts. He's now 31, so he might have gone down a couple of overalls. But he's still at least a 76 rated striker, I'd say. He's playing his trade at Bolton in League One. So... Even with the signing of Timothy Weyer, we still don't have the best striker even in League One. That is Bolton's Artem Juba. So, yeah, even though he paid a big price tag, he's actually not the best striker in the uh, in the league. He's the best currently rated player at the club, but uh, it's still one to be divided. Even though we were 2 and up here against Bradford, I don't know what went wrong. I, I don't know what, I just felt like I'd not really done bits. Um, we were quite fortunate in many ways to be 2 up. We had a lucky header from Timothy Weyer go in. The keeper should have saved it. And then an unbelievable strike from Ethan Shaw. But then I just made a mistake and Doyle got in here and typical number nine fashion smashed it in the bottom corner to give it Bradford 2. Uh, sorry, Grimsby 2, Bradford 1. And then with four or five minutes to go, Scannell gets down the left. He puts in a great cross and there's Doyle again meeting it in the box with a volley. Another fantastic finish, and not for the first time in a series, we've thrown away a two-goal advantage. We've done this before in League Two. I said at the beginning of League One season, I did go on to say we won't be able to make the same mistakes that we did last season, otherwise we will be made to pay. Bradford created these two opportunities and scored them both. So fair play to Doyle, because it was a really, really tidy finish on both of the strikes that he got. And it just kind of made me frustrated, because we should have got another win there. Um, but we ended up with a 2-2 draw. It's still not a defeat, so at least there's that to take from the game. It's positive. 
Overall, I just felt annoyed at myself for throwing away the two-goal lead that we actually had. Having said all that, though, um, looking at the side, the way that it is right now, I firmly believe that we're one player away from having a title-winning side in League One, and that is potentially another defender. If we get in solid defender in January... I think we will go on to win this League One title. I believe we've got the quality of players there that we need. We've got Shaw tearing it up in the division. Timothy Weyer, who knows how to put the ball in the back of the net. And Van Bergen, who currently is a top scorer since his signature from Heron Veen. And speaking of Van Bergen, there he is to give us the lead against Plymouth in this away game right here. Honestly, this kid, this kid is brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to say it. I'm going to keep saying it to literally everybody that comes through because uh, there's a lot of uh, young players in this side that are just doing bits, solidly doing bits. And it wouldn't surprise me if in January, even if he's only been here for six months, that we start getting offers in for Van Bergen because he's clearly too good to be playing League One football right now. I'm surprised that we got him on such a steal of 1.5 million. I really, really am. He caused no end of problems for Plymouth and could have had a second very, very shortly after. Really good move to cut inside and he's just in that sort of form that you expect things to just go his way. So I thought, why not try and take this shot on? Um... He went wide of the post, but it was very, very close to doing it. And after the full-time whistle went, we secured ourselves a 1-0 win. A much better defensive performance in this one, comparing it to Bradford last time out. Um, we didn't really give away too much. You can see there, I don't even think Plymouth had a shot on our goal, which was, uh, was obviously decent. But we just had to really focus and keep our composure. Because at 1-0, anything can happen. Um, we didn't create that many chances ourselves. We got eight shots, but only three of those on target. So, yeah, we didn't really do too much in the creative side of it. So the one goal was enough just to secure us the win. We then face MK Dons. Van Bergen on the score sheet again as he scored the opener on a 1-1 draw. And I had to show you this right here, guys. I spoke last episode about the potential for injuries. And I generally don't get them unless they are serious. Well, we've got one. And it is to Josh Tymon. You may have already been seeing Garcia feature for us earlier on against Bradford and in that game there. And the reason for that... It's because Josh Tymon has picked up a cruciate ligament injury for two months. I said we don't get them often, but when we do, they're normally quite bad. And I have just gone ahead and jinxed it. Sick. I mean, it's not really that bad because we do have another player to come in there. Garcia obviously picked him up on the pre-contract. So he's, he's a good replacement to bring in. It could have been much worse. It could have been one of our better players, the likes of Shaw, Van Bergen, who's in goal, good goal-scoring form. But it is kind of frustrating in many ways when you see that sort of stuff happen because it's like I've basically jinxed ourselves. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be hopefully quite easy for Tymon to come back and get back in the side. We'll see if he can do that. We then faced Charlton away. We had the ball in the back of the net early on. Takefusa Kubo with the finish, but he was offside when he got played through from Rodney Janssen, so it would not count. McNeil setting up Ethan Shaw. He would score. Very comical aspect about this one as well because the keeper actually gets his face to the ball here and <laughs> very nearly saves it with his face. Felt kind of harsh on the goalkeeper, actually, because not only is it Shaw scoring the goal, but it's just, look at this, right? The delivery from McNeil towards that near post. Shaw completely unmarked, and it hits him straight square in the face. Keeper just sat there thinking, I don't even know what's happened to myself here. But Shaw again, scoring another goal, showing why he's in the side. Van Bergen, anything you can do, Shaw, I can do it as well. 2-0 up in the game with 17 minutes to go. It's just going so, so well. It really, really is going so well at the minute. And I couldn't be really happier with the side we've built here. And that's largely down to you guys. You know, the signings I've made, barring Ross Sykes and uh, Josh Tymon, they were the only two that I made without your suggestions. I mean, they're unbelievable. Van Bergen is quite possibly one of my favourite players in this team, if not for Ethan Shaw. And obviously, Timothy Weyer has a bright future ahead of him. I can't wait to see just how much he's going to bang in this season in League One. And it's all signings that you guys have suggested. So keep them coming. As I said previously, the only reason I didn't sign some of the other ones were because... I wanted to strengthen a striker and a defender. So if you left like a centre midfielder or a winger, I have seen that comment. The only reason I didn't act upon it was because I felt we already had strength in those positions, including goalkeeper as well. So bear that in mind though, guys, because in January, I am looking for another defender as well. That was the way the game would end. Charlton had one chance, a massive overhead kick that went over the top of the crossbar, but not by much. And it would have been some goal had it have gone in the back of the net. Um, but that, like I said, secured as the 2-0 win. Ethan Shaw and, of course, Van Bergen both on the score sheet again in this one. Those two are pretty much, when we're in a little bit of a bad, you know, kind of performance in a game, they just carry us out of it. Next up was Bristol Rovers. We were at home, so I simmed it. Shaw scored first again. Um, and then I think they equalise and we go on to actually draw this one by two goals to one. In fact, sorry, wait, no. We go on to win it by two goals to one. Not draw no, wait, did we draw it? Yeah, we did. We drew it 1-1. 
I'm getting so ahead of myself right now, I don't even know what to say. But this is what I wanted to show you. So I looked at Bolton's side because right now, Juba is the top scorer in the division. He's got nine goals. Oh, sorry, eight goals in nine games. And that is an unbelievable goal scoring form. So I decided to check him out a little bit. And I realized very quickly that is the same Artem Juba that I was thinking it was. Clearly too good for League One football. But hey, he's at Bolton. He's banging him in for fun. And I'm sure by the end of the season, Bolton will not be a League One club. Because if you've got a striker of his caliber here... You shouldn't be playing League One football. That's all I'm going to say. Should be at least championship. And uh, they actually find themselves third going into this one. Luton are top. We're in second. And uh, Bolton in third currently. We are unbeaten. But a few draws as of recently have, you know, made us slip down the table a little bit into our second place. Van Bergen in great form. 40 scored to make it 1-0. Cheltenham, our opponents on the day. It was a really, really nice save from the goalkeeper. Gets one strong hand to it and pushes it out for the corner. Nothing of which came of anything. And then Cheltenham got a throw in. They sent it towards Clements. He dinks the ball in towards the back post. Dawson completely unmarked. Against the runner play, Cheltenham won. Grimsby Town nil. For the first time in League One, we were really going to be tested here. I don't think we found ourselves in a position quite like this. Where we were 1-0 down and had pretty much all of the play up until this stage. And I felt like this was going to be the first defeat of the season. We, we were unbeaten up until this point. But I genuinely thought this is going to be it. We're going to lose this game right here. Kept going right until we wanted to, though. A really weird touch from McNeil. Sent it into a great area. Timothy Weir. No, that's not what you want to see from a 2.5 million pound man. When he's in the box, completely open goal. You don't expect him to smash it over the top of the crossbar. Timothy, mate, you're killing me. Eight minutes to go. We were fighting our way forward. Weir wins the ball back. Finds Hessenthaler. He lays it to Rodney Hansen. And he puts the ball in the back of the net. Cheltenham won. Grimsby won. And it was a horrific moment for Cheltenham. They basically made themselves a grave and they had to lie in it. Because they gave us the ball away on the left-hand side with Weyer winning it back. Finding Hessenthaler. And he just played the easy pass to Janssen who got us back on level terms. It was all we deserved. And I was very happy with that one. It is a draw but you know, at least it's not the defeat. Or so we thought. Because then... With two minutes left, Van Bergen finds substitute McGuinness and he scores what proves to be the winning goal away against Cheltenham. I genuinely could not believe this. They'd got the opener. They then sat back. We were very fortunate to get back in the game. And within a matter of 10 minutes, not only had we got on a draw, we'd got on ourselves a win. And it was a substitute who'd got us the winning goal as well. He's been out of the side of McGuinness, and you can't really argue that fact because Van Bergen is playing unbelievably right now. So he just can't get in the team. But if he's going to do that and get us a winning goal against Cheltenham, I'm quite happy to see him play every so often. He won't get in ahead of McNeil. He won't get in ahead of Van Bergen. But maybe a centre midfield role would be quite an interesting role for McGuinness to have. Who knows? But again, he's not going to get in ahead of Cox. He's not going to get ahead of Shaw. So... How do you really fit him into the team? And this is my problem. This is why I didn't want to bring in another winger or another centre midfielder. Because right now, struggling to get Neil in the side. And he's just scored a winning goal for us against Cheltenham. So, what can you do? But that is it for the episode today, guys. One more game against Warsaw to come. A sim game, I believe we do win this one 2-1. This was the one I got mistaken for last time. I believe goals from Hessenthaler and also a goal as well. From Jackson, wins the game by two goals to one. But if you did enjoy today's episode, guys, a like would be greatly appreciated. As always, thank you for all of your continued support. I really appreciate it. You guys are incredible for all you do for me and the channel. That's how the league table looks. And if you are new around here and you like what you see, subscribe button is down below. Click that and follow me on the channel. Until next time, though, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Catch you all again very, very soon. Adios.